These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Do you remember what the symbol is for entropy? S? That's right. Oh, it would be logical to use E for entropy, but some people like to use E for, for energy. Mm -hmm. I don't know where the S comes from, but anyway, we'll use S for entropy. One thing to keep in mind is that entropy is a state function. Can you think of any other thermodynamic variables that are state functions? Um, yeah, the internal energy is a state function. Yeah, that's the big one, U. Uh, and what are some important thermodynamic variables that are not state functions? Um, work and heat. Yeah, those are the ones I was thinking about. So in terms of delta U equals Q minus W, delta U is the state function, and Q and W are not state functions. Well, here's another state function, S. So let's say we start at this point and move around in a cycle. What would delta S be? Um, oh, it would be zero. That's right. Because that's what it means to be a state function. A state function is something that is zero for any cyclic path. And a cyclic path is where the initial point is the same as the final point. It turns out that those two things imply each other. Yeah. That's right. So state functions are path independent, and they're also zero for any cyclic process. You can do a little logic and see those two imply each other. That's right. Ah, so as I guess you imagined, this was supposed to be a PV graph. So let's say that delta S for this path is 10 joules per Kelvin, and delta S for this path from here to here is 7 joules per Kelvin. What would the entropy change be for this path? They're both ending at the same point, although they're not starting at the same point. That's right. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe let's do a warm-up question. Well, we can do it for this one here. What would the total entropy change be if you start at A, you go to C, and then you go to B? From A to C and then to B. So we know if we go directly from A to B, the entropy change is 10 joules per Kelvin. Mm -hmm. But what if you go from A to C and then go from C to B, what would be the total entropy change? Well, the key thing is to use path independence. We know that um, if you go directly from A to B, the entropy change is 10 joules per Kelvin. But that means that the entropy change anytime you start at A and go to B is 10 joules per Kelvin. So what would be the entropy change if we go from A to C and then to B for that whole path? Right? Do you see how that would help us to figure out what this entropy change is? Yeah. Okay, so it'd be three joules. Right. Because it goes without saying, or maybe we should have said, the total entropy change for a path is the sum of the individuals. Okay. So if you wanted, um, if the entropy change of this plus this adds up to ten, then this must be three. 
So this is the flip side, another flip side of the fact that entropy is a state function. Mm -hmm. That it's something you'd already mentioned, that it is path independent, and this is how that would tend to be tested. So how, how do you use this to solve a problem? Well, if they're asking you for the entropy change, if you're focusing on the entropy change between two points, ask yourself, remember that you don't have to find the entropy change for the path they're focusing on. You could find the entropy change for any path between those two points. In fact, that's a general trick that physicists have for dealing with entropy. If they want to figure out the entropy change along a particular path from A to B, well, they don't have to just confine themselves to that path. They can find the easiest path from A to B. And um, they can figure out that entropy change, and that'll tell them what the entropy change is for any path from A to B. Well, we also, it would clearly have been helpful here to know the total entropy change for going from A to C and then C to B. Well, we could just find the easiest path, which is the one we already know. calculate entropy for a reversible process for a reversible process the entropy is equal to Q over T I guess I got a little bit ahead of myself I should have said a little bit what entropy is uh, you, you probably already got a bit of a feel for that from class. Uh, does entropy measure order or disorder? Disorder. Yeah, entropy measures the disorder of the substance. Well, let's say that you are adding heat to a substance. If you're adding heat to the substance, would its Q be positive or negative? Um. If you're adding heat to a gas, say, would the Q for the gas be positive or negative? Just the Q. That's just our definition of Q. When something is absorbing heat, its Q is positive. Yeah. Now, let's just think about this in common sense terms. When you're adding heat to something, would you expect that to make it more ordered or more disordered? More disordered. That's right. You might think that the heat might be adding energy to it, uh, but we know that the energy is going to tend to increase the disorder of the particles. Yeah. Uh, they could end up moving around faster, uh, so they could be more disordered. So, the fact that Q appears here actually makes some sense. By uh, So if you're adding heat and Q is positive, you would expect that to increase the disorder. So when Q is positive, S should be positive. It's a little harder to see why T is in the denominator over here. We won't spend too much time on that. But if T is big, um, is the entropy already big or already small? Well, I shouldn't put it that way. But if T is big, would you say that the substance already is high, has a high amount of uh, order or disorder? Let's forget about this formula for a second. If something's already starting with a high amount of entropy, oh, you know? Disorder. Yeah. So I wrote down the wrong formula. I should have written it like this. Yeah. This would make much more sense. This formula actually tells you how entropy is changing. Okay. okay. Now, if the T is big, uh, what were you saying? Was Does that mean that something is going to be ordered or disordered? Disordered. Because, again, the particles are moving around very quickly. So the general idea here is, if T is already very big, adding a little bit more heat doesn't make much difference, because there's already so much disorder. Okay. So if T is very big, the change in entropy is going to be relatively small, because there's already so much, so much disorder that a little bit more heat doesn't make much difference. Okay. That's a rough way of seeing why T should be in the denominator here. When T, because when you put something in the denominator, that gives us an inverse relationship. When T is big, that tends to cause entropy changes to be small. Entropy is already so big that the heat isn't going to make much of a difference anyway. On the other hand, if T was very small, um, then things would be highly ordered, and even a little bit of heat would um, make a big difference. Okay. So there's some rough intuition for why this formula uh, roughly speaking, does tell you how the disorder of a system is changing. 